the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance education lesson. I am Sabun Humphrey, your history teacher for the lower C class. We are going to start our lesson today with the correction of the homework. And our homework was to examine the socio-economic achievements of German colonial administration in Cameroon. Examine the socio-economic achievements of German colonial administration in Cameroon. Now, in response to this question, uh, we are going to be looking at the social and economic achievements of German colonial rule in Cameroon. And we're going to start with the first point that talks about the complete abolition of the slave trade. Now, the German colonial administration in Cameroon respecting the humanitarian clause of the Berlin Conference, in short, the effective abolition of slavery, slave trade, and other inhuman practices that were still common, especially in the interior. Also, the Germans promoted education in all aspects, built schools, recruited teachers, and this helped to solve the problem of illiteracy amongst the local people. In addition, the Germans also improved on health facilities. They provided solutions to deadly tropical diseases by setting up health centers and training doctors that helped to meet up with the health challenges of the local people. German colonial administration also promoted Christianity. Christianity in German administration or in German Cameroon was promoted by the Basel mission. And the local people were taught Christian virtues like love, peace, charity, and most importantly, the good news of salvation. In addition, the Germans also in, uh, uh, contributed significantly in developing local languages. They developed local languages, and some of these local languages included the Mungaka language, the Dwala language. And this helped to ease not just communication, but the spread of the gospel. In addition, the Germans introduced plantation agriculture. Now, they set up large commercial plantations and produced diverse uh, raw materials like cocoa, rubber, banana. And these plantations were important because they provided job opportunities to many local people. There was equally the development of transport infrastructure. And of course, this area was very important because it helped to ease the movement of goods and persons. Different transport networks were developed, roads were constructed, bridges were constructed, railway lines to transport bulky goods were also developed in different parts of Cameroon. The Germans also introduced the German mark. And of course, the German mark was the official currency which helped to ease trade transaction in the territory. The Germans also promoted trade. There was local trade within the territory and international trade. As concerns uh, international trade, the, uh, the German traders brought in manufactured goods like dresses, hot drinks, and firearms. And trade in the territory was carried out by German trading firms like uh, Jansen and Tomalen firm, as well as the Karl Woman firm. There was equally uh, infrastructural development. They developed infrastructures, put up modern structures. And one of such modern structures, which is still standing up to date, is the Prime Minister's launch in 
Boya. Concerning our previous knowledge, we already have lessons on or knowledge on the Industrial Revolution, which was instrumental in uh, provoking the scramble for Africa. <laughs> Our lesson proper is the scramble for Africa, the European scramble for Africa. Concerning our lesson objective, we are going to start with learning objective. We'll move to situation in real life, lesson activity, application exercise, as well as homework. Now, what is our learning objective? We have two key questions here. Critically examine the reasons for European scramble for Africa. Critically examine the reasons for European scramble for Africa. Also, analyze the different methods used by colonial powers to acquire territories in Africa. Now, we move to our uh, lesson activity number one. And here, it is uh, th this a document which you are expected to observe for a minute. And if you look at the document closely, you are going to find uh, the map of Africa. And the map is surrounded by people who are uh, pulling it to, their, to themselves from different angles. And of course, the title is The Scramble for Africa, 1880 to 1914. So this map is... Uh, a cartoon that is depicting the, the the European scramble for Africa in the 1880s. Now, these people who surrounds the map and are dragging it from different angles represent the different colonial powers that were involved in the scramble. We had Spain, Portugal, Italy, Germany, Britain, Great Britain, and Belgium. These are the different European powers that were involved in the scramble. Now, after looking at, after observing that document, we are expected to uh, briefly describe the document above. Then, secondly, define the term the scramble for Africa. Explain why the scramble was delayed until 1879 and what were the reasons for the European scramble for Africa. Those are a series of questions we will be expected to answer. Now, in relation to the first question, it says briefly described the document above. Now, this is the document. So, the document is simply uh, indicating the map of Africa depicting the European scramble. We've seen uh, different European powers from different angles struggling to grab as many, as much of Africa as possible. And the different European powers that were involved in the scramble were Britain, France, Germany, Portugal, Italy, Spain, and Belgium. In relation to our second question, we are expected to define the term the scramble for Africa. What was the scramble for Africa? The scramble for Africa was simply the rush by major European colonial powers in the 1880s to acquire spheres of influence in Africa so as to make political, economic, and social gains. They rushed by major European colonial powers in the last quarter of the 19th century to acquire territories in Africa so as to make political, economic, and social gains. Now, why was the scramble delayed until 1879? It is important to note that the scramble started officially and effectively in the year 1879 with the rush over the Congo by King Leopold II of Belgium, France, and Portugal. So the question now is why was the scramble delayed until 1879? Now, it is important to note that the European colonial powers had other areas that appeared more attractive than Africa. Of course, they had areas like New Zealand that appeared to be more attractive. So they were more interested in those attractive areas than rushing for Africa. Also, the anti-colonial attitudes of world powers like USSR and USA 
scared the colonial powers from rushing over Africa. That is what influenced the delay, or that helped to delay the, 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 the scramble for Africa. In addition, the, it should be noted that the Industrial Revolution was the main event that provoked the European scramble for Africa. But of course, the slow development of the Industrial Revolution helped to delay the scramble. Why? Because the Industrial Revolution began in Britain, and of course, it took a very long time to spread to other parts of Europe. This helped to delay the scramble because the other European powers could not be rushing for African territories when the industrial process was not yet complete. In addition, there was political instability in France. France uh, uh, was a victim of a series of revolutions. 1848 revolution, 1879 revolution. So France, being one of the major European colonial powers, was more interested in resolving her internal eco uh, political problems rather than rushing for African colonies. So her absence from the colonial race made the scramble less competitive and helped to delay the scramble until 1879. Also, some uh, major European powers that were interested in the scramble, like Italy and Germany, were not united until 1871. And even after their unification in 1871, they were more interested in the internal development of their different countries rather than rushing for African territories. They were more interested in making their country strong European powers before becoming strong colonial powers. Of course, their absence in the initial phase of the scramble also made it less competitive and helped to slow down the scramble or helped to delay the scramble. In addition, there was the presence of powerful empires in Africa, like Ghana, Mali, Songa, Mwene Mutapa. These empires were so strong and capable of preventing any form of invasion of the continent. So the presence of these powerful empires helped to delay the scramble for Africa. Now, as America and Asia served as markets for excess European goods. America and Asia also served as an area where the Europeans could get enough raw materials. So it means, therefore, that the Europeans developed little interest over Africa, possibly because they were able to get enough raw materials from Asia and from America. And that made them to develop little interest over the continent. And the scramble was bound to delay. The next question here is, what were the reasons for European scramble? Of course, it is important to note that although the scramble delayed until 1879, it eventually started. So what were the motivations, what were the reasons that encouraged the different European colonial powers to develop interest over Africa? It is important to note that the reasons for scramble can be grouped under economic, political, and social. It means that the scramble was influenced by the desire to satisfy European economic interests, social interests, and political interests. So economically, the European past rushed for African territories because they were in need of markets for their excess goods. It is important to note that the Industrial Revolution enabled the Europeans to produce goods in large quantity, which could not all be consumed locally in Europe. So this influenced the different European powers to rush for overseas territories where they hope to create new markets to consume their uh, excess goods. Secondly, there was the need for raw materials. Of course, thanks to the Industrial Revolution, there was high demand for raw materials in European factories. This is one of the economic reasons that encouraged the different European powers to rush over African territories with the hope of get, ensuring a steady and constant supply of different raw materials from Africa, like cocoa, rubber, banana, coffee, and so on. In addition, the scramble for Africa was influenced by the desire to invest surplus capital. The European, uh, as a result of the Industrial Revolution, were able to accumulate huge capital. And this encouraged them to rush for African territories where they hoped to acquire vast land and invest their cap capital by setting up large commercial plantations, factories, railway lines, and other projects. 
Also, the, the, the scramble for Africa was influenced by the availability of cheap labor in Africa. So the presence of cheap labor in Africa needed by the Europeans to work in their plantations here in Africa and other projects was an additional factor that encouraged the different European powers to scramble over the continent. In uh, addition, the availability of vast fertile land in Africa equally influenced the Europeans to develop interests over Africa. They needed such vast fertile land to set up plantations. Of course, the plantations were going to supply them with the different raw materials they needed. They developed, there was development in transport. Development in transport here has to do with the invention of steamship and uh, uh, sea vessels. And these sea vessels were developed thanks to the technology the Europeans got from the Industrial Revolution. And of course, it influenced their movements from the different parts of Europe to the African coast and even into the interior, thereby making scramble uh, uh, possible. Uh, another reason for the scramble was the discovery of huge mineral deposits in Africa. European exploration led to the discovery of huge mineral deposits in Congo and South Africa. Now, this made the Europeans to believe that Africa was a continent rich in diverse mineral resources. So the discovery of these minerals like gold, diamond, bauxite, encouraged the different European nations to develop interest over Africa with the hope of discovering more of the minerals. Away from the economic factors, the scramble for Africa, the European scramble for Africa, was equally influenced by political considerations. And what were these political considerations? Uh, there was a collapse of African empires. Now, strong African empires like the Ghana, Mali, Songa, Mwene, Mutapa, Lumba, Lunda collapsed, thereby paving the way for the rise of new ones like the Sokoto, the Masina, and the Tukolo empires. Unfortunately, these new empires were not strong enough to resist European penetration. So the Europeans took advantage of the collapse of these powerful empires to invade Africa or to uh, scramble for Africa. There was equally the need for territorial compensation. It simply means that some European nations rushed to acquire African territories because they wanted to compensate themselves for having lost territories elsewhere. A typical example was the case of France. After the loss of Assas and Lorraine during the Franco-Prussian War, France decided to rush to acquire African territories so as to compensate herself for, uh, for the loss of Assas and Lorraine. There was equally the, 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 the resolution of the Berlin Colonial Conference of 1884-85. The Berlin Conference simply came and facilitated the scramble. And this was done by recognizing European colonial possessions in Africa, as well as defining the conditions for the acquisition of African territories. Of course, the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 encouraged new nations like Germany and Italy to join the colonial race. The European powers equally rushed for African territories because of what? Pride and prestige. Remember, the strength of a European nation was determined by the number of colonies she had abroad. So that is one of the factors that influenced the European scramble for Africa. Now, also there was the search for strategic military bases. Now, the search for strategic military bases here was influenced by the fact that the long Atlantic coast of Africa provided naval facilities that were needed by na European naval giants like Britain, France, and so on. So they were rushing to acquire African territories so as to take control of these naval facilities for their military exploits. Then the possession of superior military weapons. The Industrial Revolution enabled the Europeans to produce and own superior, superior military weapons. The possession of these superior military weapons encouraged the Europeans to embark on the scramble because they were sure of victory in case of resistance. There was equally the, the need to recruit African soldiers into European armies. This was going to enable the Europeans to use Africans to help them fight their war, as was the case during the First and Second World War. Now, we also have social reasons for scramble. What were the social considerations that influenced the Europeans to scramble for African territories? The first point has to do with the growth of European population. It is important to note that the Industrial Revolution led to rapid growth in European population. 
because there was improvement in medical facilities, there was a good living standard, and so on. So there was this influence growth in European population, but without the corresponding growth in employment opportunities. So this was because what was initially done by human labor was not done by machines. So many people were rendered unemployed. So the Europeans now decided to rush for African territories because they wanted to settle their unemployed population in Africa. Also, there was a desire for Christianity, to introduce Christianity, which is the belief in one God, and teach Africans the good news of salvation, as well as other Christian virtues like peace, charity, love, and so on. The development in medical facilities equally influenced the scramble. It is important to note that uh, thanks to the uh, development or thanks to the advent of the Industrial Revolution, the Europeans were able to develop medical facilities or come out with uh, a discovery of uh, uh, medication like quinine, which helped to address the problem of tropical disease and it helped to encourage the Europeans to embark on the scramble because they were sure of victory or they were capable, they were going to be capable of meeting up with the challenges posed by tropical disease. They came because of tourism, because of adventure. They wanted to satisfy their curiosity about the riches of Africa. Of course, they, they, you, it was influenced by European uh, uh, pressure from European scientists. European scientists needed vast virgin areas in Africa where they would be able to carry out their research. So they mounted pressure on their European governments to embark on the scramble. And that is one of the social reasons that influenced the scramble. Our second question here has to do with uh, uh, analyze the different methods used by colonial powers to acquire territories in Africa. Now, the different colonial powers adopted different methods, and these methods were influenced, the use of these methods were influenced by the reactions of the Africans. It's important to know that there were African states who submitted themselves to colonial rule without resistance. There were African states who embraced the Europeans and collaborated. There were African states that put up stiff resistance against colonial rule. So based on these diverse reactions from the Africans, the Europeans to de develop different methods. Now, one of such methods had to do with what? Military conquest. Now, military conquest here simply has to do with uh, the use of European advanced army to conquer the Africans and colonize them by force. And a typical example was the case of Algeria, the French invasion of Algeria in 1830. It's a typical example of military conquest. Also, we had gunboat diplomacy. Gunboat diplomacy involved the use of or the display of European warships along the African coast with the intention to either frighten or impress the Africans so as to facilitate colonization. John Kick used a British fleet to intimidate the Sultan of Zanzibar and was able to colonize the area. Then we equally had annexation. Annexation here had to do with the complete takeover of a weak African state by a strong colonial power. And this was done after the signing of an annexation treaty. That was one of the general methods used by colonial powers to acquire territories in Africa. In addition, we had the mandate system. The mandate system came into play after the First World War. When territories seized from the defeated parts of the First World War, were given to some European nations to manage as mandate territories of the League of Nations. A good example has to do with Tanganyika, a former German colony that was given to Britain. Then we equally had Togo land given to Britain and France. Then there was equally the role of European chartered companies. Now, European chartered companies were simply European firms that were involved in trade in Africa. These European firms by virtue of the fact that they needed security for their investment and they need to ensure trade monopoly, negotiated and colonized African states on behalf of their home government. They colonized the states and handed to their home government. A good example had to do with the Royal Niger Company of George Gordy that colonized Nigeria for the British government. Also, missionaries were used as colonial agents. The European missionaries acted as colonial agents and their preaching softened the minds of the people who eventually accepted annexation. That's why it's often say, said that the, the, the flag follows the cross. So the cross represents the missionaries who went on a pacification mission 
to preach and prepare this groundwork for European colonization. At the end of the day, these missionaries played a very big role to influence or facilitate colonization. We had sphere of influence. Now, this method was adopted by Britain and France, where they simply transformed areas where they, tra they had trade interests into outright colonies. We had protectorate ship. Protectorate ship here has to do with European, some European powers coming to Africa under the pretext of protecting with African states from their hostile neighbors, but ended up colonizing the states they were coming to protect. A good example was the case of Northern Nigeria, protected by the British, but the British ended up colonizing all of Nigeria. <laughs> This is the, we move to application exercise. This application exercise is having the photograph of an important European statesman who was very instrumental in, not only in European diplomacy, but in the scramble for and partition of Africa. And we'll be expected to identify the, the, pers the personality in the paragraph or in the, the document. This personality is Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck was the German chancellor. Initially, he was not interested in the scramble, but later on joined. Now, he did not only join the scramble, but contributed in ensuring a peaceful partition of Africa. Now, next question says, why did he finally join the colonial race? He was initially not interested, but he finally joined. And why he changed his mind in favor of uh, colonization the first point has to do with rapid growth of industrialization in Germany led to the need for raw materials now it means that German industries were growing rapidly and there was the need to ensure a steady and constant supply of raw materials. this forced Bismarck and his government to change their mind in favor of annexation there was equally pressure from some German societies like the Pan-German League, the Navy League, and the Colonial Society. And of course, German traders mounted pressure. So the persistent pressure on German government made them to change their mind in favor of colonization. Bismarck changed his mind in favor of colonization because he wanted territories in Africa where he would be able to settle German growing population. There was equally the pressure from German traders who needed to enjoy trade monopoly in Africa and to ensure the security of their investment. So all of this influenced Bismarck to change his mind. Germany joined the colonial race because of pride and prestige. Of course, the strength of a European nation was uh, 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 determined by the number of colonies she had abroad. So Germany wanted to be seen, feared, and respected. Also by 1884, Germany had enjoyed economic boom as a result of the exploitation of resources from Alsace and Lorraine, and this permitted Germany to be able to finance colonial ventures in Africa. That explains why Bismarck joined the colonial race. We move now to the main features. What were the main features? What were the main characteristics of the European scramble for Africa? Now, it is important to note that the scramble, the rush, the European rush for African territories was directed towards strategic areas. The European rush to acquire only strategic areas. These strategic areas could be river basins, vast fertile land, naval facilities. They did not just rush to acquire uh, uh, barren lands. So the scramble was characterized by the rush over strategic areas. There were resistances. Another characteristic has to do with res indigenous resistance against colonial rule. This has to do with outright rejection of colonial rule. We had the Mandinka resistance the Abyssinian resistance. Of course, there was equally competition in the signing of trade and annexation treaties. The Europeans competed among themselves to sign commercial treaties, friendship treaties, and annexation treaties with African states. There was the, the use of gunboat diplomacy. The different European powers adopted gunboat diplomacy, all intended to either frighten or impress the Africans so as to facilitate colonization. In addition, they use missionaries, traders, and explorers as colonial agents. Now, these missionaries, traders, and explorers studied the area, uh, gave reports back to the colonial governments, which, of course, influenced the scramble. There was the use of military conquest, use of military force, 
to colonize African territories through the use of force. In addition, there was the holding of international conferences to regulate colonial activities or European activities in Africa and ensure a peaceful partition. A good example had to do with the Berlin Conference of 1884 and the Brussels Conference of 1890. European occupation of African uh, territories started from the coast before moving into the interior. Then there, there were clashes among European colonial powers over strategic areas in Africa. The, you, 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 we have a good example of King Leopold II of Belgium, France, and Portugal over the Congo. Then there was equally uh, African territories were divided by the different European uh, uh, powers into uh, the territories that were later on transformed into colonies. So that was um, another major uh, um, future of the scramble. Just like the, 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 there was the setting up of large commercial plantations, the different European powers in order to ensure a steady and constant supply of raw materials, set up large commercial plantations, and it was intended to to supply them with the diverse raw materials they needed from Africa. Uh, uh, that is where we end the lesson for today. So it is important to note that this lesson was produced thanks to a series of documents we consulted. The first document here is Modern History for Advanced Learners by H.G. Sabum, published by uh, Grassroot Publishers, Yaoundé, Cameroon, 2021. We consulted Masterpiece, the Masterpiece uh, by B.S. Takang, published by Quality Print, Bamenda, 2020. And of course, there was West Africa and Europe, Macmillan Educational Limited by F.K. Boa, 1967. There was equally history of West Africa, 1800 to present day, Africa, Africana Fab Publisher Limited, 1973. Uh, we'll move now to our homework, and our homework here is going to be what were the impact of European scramble for Africa? The impact of European scramble for Africa. And the next lesson, of course, is going to be the Berlin Colonial Conference of 1884-1885. The Berlin Colonial Conference of 1884-1885. Thank you. On ne te gessi, ma te geyop, on ne te ge minga, ma te genyum, on ne te ge ma jang, ma te gendom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubiayen, gani bana, ma te gemot, gani la kiri, wa te gendom, esotina, bia dinkido, ma ne tambia niña ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 